Hello everyone and welcome back to finally another video. First off, sorry for the reflection in my glasses, I'm gonna change my lighting setup eventually. So a while back I made a video about how you can make really cool light effects using your beamer and a software I made called Blaze 3. Especially now, during the next lockdown here in Germany, I've been using it quite a few times to get some cool effects here in my studio. And during the course of the last few months, something amazing has happened. Over 20% of my subscribers have requested to get access to Blaze 3. So I finally took the time to bundle everything up and clean the software up a little bit. And in this video I'm going to show you how you can download the software and how to use it. If you have friends who might be interested in the software as well, then please share this video with them. If you use the software and achieve some really cool lighting effects at your next flatmate party, then please feel free to send me some pictures and videos. I'd love to see what you achieve using Blaze 3. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is download the software using a browser. I'll be hosting the download package on my Aerotrax domain. That's my artist name for when I'm making music. I also have a YouTube channel called Aerotrax, so feel free to stop by there if you're interested in making music. You'll find the download link that I'm entering right now in the description of this video. Now that it's finished, I'm going to unpack the zip archive. Inside the extracted folder, you will find a single executable. That's the only thing you need to start Blaze 3. Now one thing to consider is that you have to set up your Beamer as an external display to the left of your main computer screen. The program's control surface is divided into two parts. The left one displays the geometrical shapes for the beamer and the right one will be the control surface that you as a human control. Once you set up your beamer as an external display on the left of your laptop or computer screen, it's time to double click on the executable. If you get a warning that you're trying to run software from an unknown source, you can just run it anyway. It's definitely not a virus. You can trust me. <laughs> this is what it should look like when you've started it. If it doesn't, or if you experience any problems with the steps I'm going to show you, then please just write it in the comments. I developed Blaze 3 in my spare time, and it quite probably still has some bugs. After carefully reading through all the infos on the welcome page, you're ready to enter the password. It's botch but works. No spaces, and all the words starting with a capital letter. As you can see here, Blaze notifies you that you can change the window size by pressing Ctrl and the arrow keys. Normally, this entire Blaze window would be anchored in the top left corner of my Beamer. For demonstrational purposes, I'm going to be leaving the entire window on my primary screen. Normally, you would move the white box representing the control surface completely out of your window so that it doesn't interfere with your lighting effects. Every time you move your mouse, you can see the control surface for a few seconds. Let me start off with a quick overview of what we see here. On the top you can see different movement presets. Um, I'll talk about those in a short bit. Then here we have a color bar and below that a few faders to control speed, size, brightness and the strobing. You can switch the top and the bottom page by pressing your right mouse button. The presets have two pages so you have a total of 32 different presets and the sliders on the bottom have three pages including this one, which has a few buttons and a shading slider, and this one, which is just a line move menu. That's a fun one. The basic workflow when you're customizing your own effect is to first choose one of the presets up here. In the color bar, you can choose a color for your preset. I've limited it to a few different colors that look really great and have a lot of contrast on normal projectors. Next, you can vary the speed of your preset, change its size, and its brightness. With the strobing fader down here, you can make your preset flash really quickly. This usually looks great on dynamic parts of a song. The modifications you make on the lower four faders have a different effect depending on which preset you chose. If I use one of these circular presets, then the size is the radius of the effect. If I for example choose this wavy preset, that can make your beamer look kind of like a laser fan effect, 
then you can control the vertical size of your preset. On the next page in the lower section, you have a few buttons. The multicolor button enables you to choose a second color for your preset. As you can see on the color bar, the first color is marked with a one and the second one is marked with a two. So if I keep clicking on this color bar, I can only change the second color. What I can do is to deactivate and reactivate this multicolor button. And now the color that used to be my second color is now my first color and I can choose a new one. So that's a great way to kind of hop through colors sequentially during a song or a performance. Next, you have a BPM button. You can turn this button on and off and next to it, there's a plus and a minus button. This enables you to quick and dirty set a beats per minute value depending on how fast your song is. And then you can activate this button and Blaze will automatically change the size and speed of the effect. And every eight bars of the song, it will switch to a completely different effect. This is great if you just want to have the software running in the background with no one actively controlling it. The nudge minus and nudge plus buttons down here also belong to the automatic BPM mode and they enable you to speed up or slow down the speed of the changing animations just a little bit to get back in sync with the running song or performance. The last button on this page is the blackout button. This one is click and hold, so while you're pressing it with your mouse, the picture just disappears. This is great for creating some quick custom strobe effects by just clicking and holding it. The fader right here on this page is called shading, and the more you increase its value, the more you get a trail behind the animation. Last but not least, on the final page of the lower section is the line move button. Below this button, you have this kind of two rectangle zone that you can draw in with your mouse. And every time you draw something new, the old one disappears. How this is supposed to work is you just draw something with your mouse and the entire animation on the Beamer window follows that path. Now this animation is timing sensitive, so the faster or slower you move your cursor while drawing, the faster or slower the animation will move as well. So if you're good at drawing and have a steady hand on your mouse, you'll be able to create animations that seem to follow the beat of your song and that increase their speed shortly for uh, bass hits, for example, and you can create really cool animation loops just using this line move tool. Allow me to try and demonstrate my drawing skills. So if I just slowly move a circle here and I'll do this lower one pretty quickly. And now I'm going to activate the line move button. You can see the animation goes around the upper half slowly and then quickly around the lower one. Depending on what song you're listening to, if it's uh, like a four on the floor house beat, you could do something like one, two, three, four. And then the animation will yeah, kind of mimic that. So play around with it for yourself and see what cool things you can make with it. Now let's talk about some of the presets. I've tried to create many different individual ones but I also didn't want a hundred presets here so that you completely lose track of which one does which. So there's a total of 32 presets and we recorded some images with the camera facing into the lens of the beamer so you have an orientation of which one does which. The first ones up here are different styles of circular presets. Then you have a few, uh, I'd call it particle generators. Those look really great in my opinion if you increase the speed because then your Beamer can take full advantage of its quick response time and you get kind of this amazing laser pointy effect. The next one is this wave effect which is also great for mimicking a Beamer and I especially like this effect in multicolor mode where you can set one to a darker color like red and the other one to white, for example, and then you get this amazing segmented fan style effect. Here's a variation of that with individual rectangles instead of just a line. Then you have this rotating thing, which gives a really wide and spacious effect. This effect actually looks like when you shine a light at a disco ball, because you get a lot of small individual light rays in your room. I especially like this one when the speed is turned way down, and you can kind of play with the size of the dots depending on how much contrast your Beamer can output. 
Right here we have another type of particle generator with a few more individual blobs and also in the high speed mode uh, this one is really cool. You can turn down the size and the size here does not relate to the size of the blobs but to the amount of blobs so a low size will give you kind of this effect and yeah it kind of looks like a searchlight. This one's kind of similar but with only the outlines. And then right here you have a horizontal and a vertical scanner effect and the same one with vertical and horizontal combined. Here the individual circles bounce off the edges of your screen and again the size fader controls the amount of individual ellipses. For all you old school kids who still remember that flying DVD logo on old televisions, watch this animation until one of the balls perfectly hits the corner, you're welcome. The last effect on the first preset page displays nothing until you start dragging my logo over your screen with your mouse. Let's head over to the second preset page. In the top row you have a few really bold effects. These give you some really wide and large scanners all over your room. The next one consists of different arcs that kind of appear on the edges of your screen. Next we have a different type of wave. The special thing about this one is when you decrease the brightness some of the points stay there. So you kind of have a few single rays of light and when I increase the brightness then it goes back to being a wave effect. The next one is what I call the tumbler and on the far right of this row in the presets you just have a solid color. This one's great for just creating a strobing effect and it looks surprisingly good with a beamer. You can change the brightness of this effect, the strobing and of course it also reacts to the BPM change setting so it'll change color and after 8 beats you get a completely new effect. The next effect gives you this disappearing line animation and on the right of that there's almost the same one but now they're rotating. The next one consists of four rotating circles. I really like this one using the shading setting on the far right and then changing the size of the animation because then you get this tunnel thing. And the next effect is actually a mistake I made while programming the effect we just discussed. You can kind of see why, because it's also four rotating circles, but the axes are all screwed up. But anyway, it's, it, it looked really great in real life, so I kept it. Okay, four more to go. This one also looks pretty great if you crank up the shading. Then we have this really trippy square in and out animation, which also looks pretty nice using the shading setting. Second to last we have this wiper animation consisting of multiple single dots. And finally the last effect is actually an emulation of a device called a quad face by American DJ. The special thing about this one is that you can uh, see the colors of the red, green, blue and white LED chip on the wall. So if you change the color, I'm gonna turn multicolor off real quick so we have single colors only, kind of yeah, emulates that RGB chip behavior. White, of course, is, is everything and cyan is blue and green and so on. Two things I haven't talked about yet. The first one is this gray button in the color bar. That just generates a random color. Also colors that you don't see here, so you can just click through and um, I kind of like this pink. And here I can also activate the multicolor option and choose another random color for my secondary color. The other thing I'd like to talk about is that you can always use your mouse to draw on the animation surface on the beamer right here. This is great for if you want to just quickly shine a light at one of your friends or if you want to highlight a certain spot in your room. Alright guys, that's what my software Blaze 3 is capable of at the moment. If you have any great ideas about new features or things that don't work or maybe new presets, then please feel free to write them in the comments. I'd really love to see what you can do using the software. Your creativity and whatever you do operating Blaze 3 is what really makes the animations come to life. If you're unsure about how to use the software and how to set up your Beamer, then check out my previous video on this topic where I explain how you can set up a small fog machine, a normal projector and your laptop to produce all of the effects I showed you today. One last thing I'd like to point out is that I programmed a Blaze 3 remote control app for Android a few years ago. If any of you guys are interested in using that app on your Android phones to remote control your effects as well, then please also notify me of that and I can see if I can get the app up to date for current Android versions. I hope you have a lot of fun either at your next flatmate party 
or just sitting on the couch and watching the effects that come out of your old projector. If you're interested in updates on all of my projects, you can also find me on Instagram. I'll put the link below. So now get your hands on a download of Blaze 3, get creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.